I have a really big two-part question to start for you because okay. you obviously have had your fair share of experience producing franchise films. What is something about your approach to making that type of movie that has stayed the same since day one? But then I also want to know something that is something new based on how the industry and viewer habits have evolved. Well, I, I'm gonna, I'll tackle the personal for a second and then think about that. It's an interesting question. Um, I for whatever reason, I've been able to uh, retain my child-like uh, enthusiasm. And so for me, I treat these with really a great seriousness, but it comes from the point of view of, uh, you know, you could say fandom, but really from I just on a pure storytelling level, I, f I love the escapism of, of different worlds and different people in that character. So I, I, th I guess that, has ha that certainly had an impact because I haven't changed it. I love that answer to that question. Uh, <laughs> I feel like if you don't have that passion and enthusiasm yeah. for this material, what are you doing here? Well, I think it's time to retire then if, you, if you've if you lost it. Um, what what has happened? Well, I think what's interesting, and, and in some ways this movie is a return to the kind of, I'll say, superhero movie I really like, which is really about the character. You know, I think what's happened in this, uh, in the greater, I'll say the greater comic book world is it's become more about the world than it is about the character. And that to me, one, I'm not that interested in the world. I'm interested in the character. And I, it's something I learned on Transformers for sure, which is when we got those movies right, it was about the characters, you know, and when we didn't get it so right, it's less interesting. And and so in Madam Web, it's so about her, about her as a scarred human being who is now going to go on, a, on a, an emotional ride for that character. I can stay connected to her and I can root for her and I can do all those things that I think are basic uh desires that I want from a movie. I like that approach. I find I find that that's what draws me in and it keeps Good. me invested after the fact as well. Given that you just brought that up, I am wondering, was there ever an iteration of this script where it was connected to the larger universe? And if that was the case, what happened that made you realize standalone will best serve this story well, and character? Before I was involved, there was a script and before SJ was involved as well. And both of us uh, really saw the advantage in not having the burden of the attachment of all this other stuff that has gone on. You know, you have to, you'd be silly to think you don't pay some homage to it and some acknowledgement, which we do. Um, but it really freed us in a way to tell a pure story, I think. And so for both of us, that allowed us to get into what I love about Dakota's journey. It's not, um, it's not just simply, well, I'm going to stand up and become the hero. It's I'm scarred. I don't want attachment. I definitely don't want responsibility for these three people. What the hell is happening to me? I'm going insane. Um, you know, and then what do I do now that I'm in this situation? So it, for me, freeing ourselves from that obligation in a sense was very freeing and allowed us to do a more complex ride with the hero. Yeah, focus on on her and also the found family aspect. Yes. It Re really got at yeah. my heart. I love those qualities Good. in these movies. Good. Because you just brought up SJ, I'll go to her next, because mm -hmm. I've read a bunch of interviews she's done, and she, she often does emphasize the fact that she felt like she had free reign on this project, which really excites me. As a producer, what are some things that you like to do to make sure that your director has creative authority over the project? Maybe even things that you wish more producers out there would do. <laughs> Well, you know, creative reign is in the eyes of the beholder, right? That's fair. Um, That's fair. So, I, look, I look at my role as trying to channel their talent. So, I challenged her in a lot of places. But at the end of the day, if your director doesn't own the inst her own instincts or his own instincts, you're not going to get a good movie. The chances of you having a good movie is very small. And so, I've learned over time that it's really about you know, and fortunately for me, I've worked on a lot of movies, so I can see the brick wall coming very often. And some, sometimes that's my most important job is to say to the director, there's a brick wall headed your way, you know, whether it's from a storytelling point of view or from a shooting point of view. So it's about, I think, shepherding in a way, as produce, I think the best producers and as a former studio executive, I got to watch and have an opinion about which producer was doing a more interesting job. And there's a lot of different ways to do it. For me, I there's a similarity in all my movies, I think. 
that represent how I like to tell stories, but in each case, it's their story. Hmm. I like that approach. Um, so I just emphasize the value of having creative freedom. But you also brought something up that I think is an important part of the process. It it is the collaboration. It is that endeavor to, you know, raise the quality of each other's work. So can you give me an example of a time when that happened on Madam Web when you challenged something SJ wanted to do and it made something better because the two of you kind of, you know, came to the same conclusion? Well, ultimately. I think it's not one specific thing, but there are several times like when we when the in one of the drafts. I felt like I really didn't understand the villain. And was that an earthquake? Just That's then? the first earthquake I've ever felt in LA and I've lived here since 2016. There you go. Well, <laughs> congratulations. You, you just witnessed it. Nothing would stop me during the middle of an interview. <laughs> that just that did. did. Okay. You want a moment? No, I'm right. Okay, good. Um, uh, uh, there's a few places in it. And one was... Uh, I felt like we were overstaying our welcome in this particular scene. So we ended up cutting that scene. Uh, I, you know, I pushed her to do the doctor scene because I said, I, if I had this crazy thing happening to me, the first thing I would do is go see the doctor. So trying, so there are things like that where, you know, that's not a big idea, but it just helps, I think, the audience to go, oh, that's what I would have done. And therefore, by the sort of decision making that she's making, because I think that, in some ways is the hardest thing about taking on a character like that is you have to buy the decision making of the character. Mm, that's so true. Uh, so those are, you know, so sometimes in small ways you're you're encouraging them to look at it differently and in other ways you're saying, you know, I really miss, I'm missing this. So I'm going to end with a, a future question for you. You have like a bajillion titles on your IMDb. I never know when something's still on the table and yeah. when something isn't. So I'll ask you more broadly, if right now you could snap your fingers and green light the project of your choice, what project would it be and wow. why? <laughs> wow. Um, it's a funny thing because it's, it's a project that is on nobody's radar right now, but it's the one I keep coming back to. It's called Hellbent. <gasps> no, it's on my radar. That's uh, Corn Hardy, right? It was. It was. Originally, he, he at one idea. point in time, he joined. I, so I love mm. that idea. Um, Paramount's management was about to really jump into it. Then it changed managements. And so it's sitting there for the moment. But that's the one I would do. Group of mercenaries go to hell yeah. to kill Satan. Yeah, I think it's a I'm great, a genre lover. Sign I me am, up for that I one. I am too. And that's what I love, you know, okay. to redeem themselves. I'm all for that. Yeah. I hope that uh, I'm going to will it into existence. And I'm also going to thank you for uh, experiencing my very first earthquake with me. All right. <laughs> 